So we are heading north, well, not that far up north, just to Quezon City to try some of the best fares that we can find and then hopefully go back to the kitchen and try to recreate it or show you different ways that you can make the much loved pares at home. Pokoi Mami Pares and Steak Chops is one of those neighborhood spots that stood the test of time due to its consistency and quality. It's an unassuming eatery on a very busy street that's always serving piping hot bowls of their famous pares. Some say it's the best they've tried. When trying out new places, always look for lines at the counter, a lack of parking, and no empty tables. With all those three things combined, you are in for a good meal. For the uninitiated, pares is a beef stew of sorts. Beef chunks are slowly braised in a stock of garlic, ginger, soy sauce, star anise, sugar, and other spices and aromatics. It can be thick, soupy, sweet, or savory. The term pares means pears, always served with some white rice, a soup, or even some noodles. You can tell this place is extremely popular. It is absolutely slammed. It is kind of like peak lunch hour, 12.30, but this, the line has not stopped since we got in here. People are in and out eating really quickly. And if you look at what the food looks like, it just makes me so happy. Like it looks really pretty and beautiful, well-plated. Even the mami is just kind of like gorgeously put together. The bulalo that they have is just a statement in itself with kind of like all this skin and fat that's right here in the middle. And the pares looks so unassuming next to these two dishes, but this is why people come here mostly for the pares and then also for the mami. They do three massive pots of pares every day and have been doing it for decades. So they're probably doing something right. So I'm gonna try the pares first before all the fat that's in there congeals because I can really tell there's a lot of fat in there. I'm actually a huge fan that it's not too saucy, which is great. Mm. I mean, the beef is like extremely tender, not like crazy sweet. There's some nice kind of like salty undernotes there. And you have good amounts and chunks of fat in there too, which I love. Like when you're eating something this soft, you want kind of like that tender fat to kind of like melt in your mouth as you're chewing it out. Put this on the rice. I love the fried garlic bits that are in there. Mmm. It's not really a fried rice, it's more topped with the crunchy garlic. But yum, this is good. So you probably tried kind of like very soupy pattis. This is not it, right? Just the right amount of sauce to finish that bowl of rice, which is really nice. I'm gonna try the other stars, the bulalo first. That's clean. Like, I don't think there's any extenders or enhancers in there. That's just long braised, long simmered, kind of like bone. I mean, for skin, that is tender. Look at that. Beautiful. That's so good. Oh my God. Like I've been doing bone broths to lose weight. I should just do this. Mm. I, I kind of want to do like a best bulalo now because this would be right up there. And the fat's still in there too, which is nice. The marrow itself. Jesus, I'm going to smash this. The mami looks insane. This is the combination of the bares with the noodles, with some chicken, <laughs> with some shawmai. I've actually never seen it kind of put together like this. Some calamansi. I love the combination of bares and chicken. It's just like so intense. Yum. Shawmai or molo, whatever you want to call it. Has a nice kind of like calamansi bite to it. Try it with the noodles. Mm. Man, these are like solid bites of food. And it's such an unassuming spot. You see cars kind of like lined up on the street, which means they're all here for their quick lunch. 
It's so well cooked and you can tell there's so much care that goes into the food. Mm. I think when we go back to the kitchen, I want to try making my own version of a pot es. Maybe two different ways. I almost don't want to recommend making it at home. You should just come here and eat it. Uh, actually, I'm going to eat it here. It's good for the food. 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 So I'm sitting here with Charlie, um, asking him a few questions about the restaurant. So ano po ibang sa Paris nyo? There's always daming tao every day. Mm, pag ganitong oras lang. Oh. Aso ah, lunch. Sure. How many mga bowls of pares every day? Ay, hindi ko mga ano, hindi ko mga estimate eh. Kasi sa ano namin, siguro alos mga 25 kilos na bigas ang araw. Uh, 25 kilos ng Bigas o ng rice. Ah, ng rice. Okay. okay. Kasi yung isang sako, ano eh. Alas dalawang araw eh. Uh, wow. Okay. So mga... Uh, two, three hundred? Pwede. More or less pwede, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tapos ilang kaldero ng pares? Tatlong kaldero. Uh, 11 kilos per kaldero. 1994 dito na kumpisa yung kuha ko. Ah, okay. So that's already... Oh, ma, ma, mga 29 siguro. 29 ganun. years dito mm, na. Wow. 29. You can taste it kasi yung yung lasa sobrang linis. Mm. Super clean. Salamat naman. Ganda yung mga balance. Mm. Galing. Pangmasa eh. Oh. Mm. Pero no, no, no hindi, <laughs> hindi lang pangmasa. It's very well made. So, good job. Mm. Salamat. Thank you, Dindin. Thank you. Kokois was super fun. It was great to kind of see it in action and see how they get absolutely slammed during their lunch service. And I love eating in carinerias that are so specific and so very good at what they do. So I'm definitely not gonna be making the exact same pares that they made because they didn't want to share the recipe with me, but I'll be making pares how I know it and show you kind of like three different styles of how you can make it at home. Pares is very up for interpretation in terms of the recipes you want to use. In terms of where it comes from, probably hard to define, but you know, there's, there's some very similar Taiwanese and there's some very similar Chinese dishes out there when it comes to braised beef or uh, soupier beef um, stews that they have a lot there that use some of the same elements. So we're gonna draw inspiration from all of those as well as our traditional pares or even the pares that you'll find kind of like on the street and come up with their own little versions. So for all three recipes, I will be using some beef shanks. I did decide to keep the bones here just cause I know they're gonna bring so much more flavor to the broth that we uh, create. So we're first gonna start by just prepping the beef. So these are absolutely beautiful shanks already. Um, not every piece needs the bone, obviously, so you can cut, kind of cut this up as you need to into nice big chunks. And then the bone part, just keep some beef kind of like hanging around there. You do want to try to remove silver skin as much as possible. That's kind of like the stuff that you see here, uh, just because even if you cook this down a lot, that is quite annoying to eat through. So in terms of the aromatics that we need or the vegetables that we need, it's actually really simple. Um, you're just gonna be using some onions, some garlic, and some ginger. Uh, it gets interesting once you start adding kind of like your dry aromatics, which are cinnamon, anise seeds, and those are kind of like the standard ones that are used in most patis recipes. Throw in our garlic and onions. For anyone who's not Filipino watching, yes, we like to cook down our onions and our garlic first, and some ginger. So two schools of thought here, you can either add cornstarch to the stew once it's kind of cooked down to give it a slurpier texture, or you can actually go ahead and take your beef, like I'm gonna do now, um, and actually place it in the cornstarch already before frying it. 
And once those are ready, you can go ahead, shake off the excess, and throw them in. Just some nice color on our beef. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in our Marca Pina soy sauce. Make sure you reduce the heat at this point. You don't wanna burn the soy sauce. Kind of just our first layer. We can always add more later if we need to. Transfer everything into our pressure cooker. Add in our water. Make sure you cover the beef completely. And you might be wondering, everyone, what about the spices? So I'm someone who likes to toast spices before using them. And just personally, this is how I like to do it. When you're making kind of like Indian curries and stuff like that, a lot of times you're toasting your spices. It just brings out so much flavor from them. Whereas if you just boil them, you don't necessarily get that toastiness from them, which is something I quite like. It's an extra step. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Star anise and cinnamon. We're gonna wait for that to smoke just a little bit. After a few minutes, you can go ahead and add it in. Close this up and we should pressure cook it for about 45 minutes. Almost forgot, bay leaves. Forgot the brown sugar as well. We're gonna do half now and then adjust later, depending on what we actually need. Same for the soy sauce. If you feel like you need more soy later, you can always add more. This video is brought to you by Marca Pina. We love their products. We've been using them in a few videos and it's a brand with great heritage that you can find absolutely everywhere um, in all Filipino households. And it's been around for a very long time for a reason. And that's why we're gonna be using the soy sauce as our primary seasoning and flavoring for all the Paris recipes that we're going to be doing. Making sure that you have the best piña ca dishes all the time. Next one we're going to do is more inspired from a Taiwanese style, uh, Taiwanese beef noodle soup, um, but obviously very inauthentic. Um, the big difference here is we're going to be adding some uh, tomatoes, but the cooking process is still fairly similar. So toast up um, our spices, same anise seed, cinnamon, <laughs> Toast up some chili flakes as well. Once our pan here on the right is nice and hot, a little bit of oil, and then all our aromatics go in. Ginger slices, garlic, a bit of salt. Tomatoes go in. And we're just gonna cook this all down for a little bit. We can add our beef back to this pan here with the tomatoes. I'll add our Marca Pina soy sauce, beef broth, and then we're gonna add a little bit of tapui because um, you'd use rice wine in most of these. Bit of rice wine here, tapui. Let that come to simmer so just those flavors come out and some of the alcohol evaporates. We are going to be using a pressure cooker here as well so we don't want to trap the alcohol in the pressure cooker so you just want to kind of cook it down a little bit. For our spice paste I'm going to be using some gochujang just to give us a nice little kick but also kind of like that funky umami flavor that I absolutely love. All this is simmering nicely. Transfer everything to our pressure cooker here, electronic pressure cooker. You can use brown sugar, panucha, you can use rock sugar, kula malaka, whatever you have available. Bay leaves, white pepper, Chinese five spice. So this will be kind of like a soupier pata style. If you've eaten a lot of pares, you'll see that usually two versions, either really kind of like corn starchy, you know, gluey type texture or a more soupy texture. So this is going to be like our soupy version. So no corn starch here. At this point, we can turn off our pressure cooker. 
the gas one and just kind of let the steam go out so that you can open it properly later. For the more unique version of our pares, I'm going to be making some roasted bone marrow just because it's like ultimate putok batok, like proper. How do you how do you translate putok batok? Putok batok. Sorry. Food that is conducive to a heart attack, and that's seen as a positive thing <laughs> here. Uh, so bone marrow, pat that dry a little bit, then we're gonna add some oil and some salt, and then we're gonna roast that at around 220 centigrade for about 15 minutes until nice and crusty. If you want your bone marrows to be really, really clean and white, soak them overnight in some salt water. It's just a visual thing, honestly, just to kind of draw out um, that additional blood that's in there. Is it gonna explode? No, I hope not. <laughs> it's my face on the line. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna check is the consistency. So we know if we need to add more cornstarch. Honestly, I kinda of like this. It's not soupy, but it has some consistency. If you want it thicker, just add in some cornstarch. That's actually really good already. Mm. This one we're gonna serve with some garlic rice. This looks insane, look at this. Okay, let's just pull the beef off. Beautiful and tender, obviously, quote unquote, cheating because of the pressure cooker. Mm-hmm. Put some on the rice. Let's make a little dimple there. Mmm. I don't know why Paris is not more of a highlighted dish. It's so comforting and it's everywhere in the street, all next to any transportation hub. It's really seen as a, uh, a street food, something that's served in like huge calderos that are just on the on side streets there in little jolly jeeps. And that beef is so tender. Next one, our spicy tomato-y pares version. You'll see no cornstarch here, so look at this. Just much more soupy in terms of texture. So that just shows you how much of a difference it makes when you actually add the cornstarch to the beef before frying it out. Beautiful kind of like red color, mainly due to the gochujang and probably a little bit of the tomatoes give out their color as well. This one we're gonna serve with a side of chicken oil rice because it is our putok batok version. And because we're crazy, just place that right there <laughs> on the side. Spring onions, be generous here. I don't think we need chilies on this one because I feel like it's already quite spiced. The smell is just so spice, like full of spices, not spicy, but full of spices. <clears throat> Broth definitely has some kick to it, which is quite nice. Beef, just as tender as the other one. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let's try to make that perfect. Bone marrow, perfectly cooked. And rest there, my friend. Mm -hmm. Personally, kind of like this one better. <laughs> I don't want to say that because it, it does not taste traditional, but just the addition of the chilies, the gochujang, just gives a completely different dimension to the dish, which is quite nice and really unique in terms of flavor. I mean, if you can, just try them all out, right? Mmm. You know when they say, God is special, since it's special, it just means that you've had a hard time. That's the secret. You can 
and 10 pesos to your dish, just like that. I mean, if you want to be really freaking crazy, then you can go ahead and do that. Like, no one's gonna stop you. I think it's my blood pressure going up. It's my cholesterol saying, hey, remember me? You kind of forgot about me there for a second, my friend. I mean, same broth as our quote unquote traditional one. We're back. Uh, let's get some of the noodles. Look at that. <laughs> mm hmm. With the bone marrow. So a bone marrow and beef party, shall we? Bone marrow, beef. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Or take it back, this is my favorite. I feel like, yeah, just the whole mama jama, the whole, combination just really works together. And if you want to add some chilies and you can kind of go for it, but it's really, really nice. <laughs> 